So at the age of uh, what, seven, seven or eight, I, uh, I think I began to understand that uh, nonviolence and love was not something you just do to your friends, you can do to your enemies and then they're no longer enemies. My dad uh, took me to Montgomery, Alabama during the Montgomery bus boycott in 1956. Uh, where we met Martin Luther King and met the people that were walking to work every day rather than ride the segregated buses. And uh, even the, the black churches were being bombed. Uh, but instead of uh, responding with, with violence or hatred, uh, they said, we're not gonna burn the, uh, the white people's churches. <laughs> uh, that's, that's not who we are. You know, we're all God's children. And so anyway, that uh, had a very great impact on me. We started going to lunch counters in Maryland to try to get something to eat, my black friends and me. And uh, so every Saturday morning when we would do that, uh, they would arrest us and we would go to jail. And instead of feeling sorry for ourselves, <laughs> we sang freedom songs. And, uh, and strengthened our spirits for uh, the, the long struggle still ahead. Well, the state of Virginia had passed a law saying anyone that, who challenged segregation in Virginia could get a uh, six months in jail and a $500 fine. And each time we, we tried to respond in a loving, nonviolent way. Uh, toward the end of the second day, I was sitting there uh, reading from the New Testament about loving your enemy. <laughs> and I heard this guy come up from behind me and he said, if you don't get out of this store in two seconds, I'm gonna stab this through your heart. And in his hand was a switchblade, a knife. And, and it was shaking like this, you know, a half an inch from my heart. And I, I decided I have two seconds to decide, do I really believe in nonviolence? Or <laughs> is there some other way to deal with this guy with so much hatred? And we'd had a lot of experience and I just looked him in the eye and I said, friend, uh, do what you believe is right, but I'll still try to love you. And it was miraculous, this face, the face that was contorted with hatred, his jaw began to drop and his, 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 his knife in his hand that, that was just right next to my heart began to, to, to fall and he left the store. So at age 20, uh, that was probably the, the most exper important experience of my life that uh, in terms of the power of nonviolence, when something terrible is happening, yeah. you don't have to just curse the television set or the president or segregation or racism or war. You find some other people who believe as deeply as you do in something and uh, get some nonviolent training and, and go and challenge it, you know, nonviolently and lovingly. And, um, that's what I've been trying to do the rest of my life. Share our success stories where we have uh, overcome hatred with love. Uh, you're not alone. We're not alone. There are people all around the world that uh, <clears throat> care as deeply as you do uh, for our children and grandchildren and for, for future generations. And I would encourage people to go to uh, worldbeyondwar.org you can sign a pledge to uh, join with people from other parts of the world to uh, work nonviolently to help create a world uh, of peace and justice. Mm -hmm.